You hear that behind me? Jurassic Park. Clever girl. My buddy Jerry's out on the property today. He's got his forestry mulcher out here. We're gonna have some fun. We're uh, finishing out the ATV trail that I started two years ago. Um, unfortunately, with the amount of space that we have and what we need to have done, it's one of those things where it's gonna take multiple steps to go through it. Today is the final step. We're connecting in all the last of the trails. We're putting together the last pieces and uh, I'm pretty excited to have it all done. From this point forward, then it'll just be maintaining it. But we built a network of trails through the property so that we can get around to different places, for hunting, for hiking, for camping, and so on. So, Jerry's out there working on the last of it today. It's pretty gnarly. So spaces like this, we didn't have an ATV trail here and I didn't have an easy way to cut across the property near the roadside. So what it does is it'll come along and it just grinds up everything along the way. And now I have a trail big enough to run the gator down. One thing for us is we'll come along later on and I'll take some loppers and we'll cut off all the high hanging stuff. This is primarily to take all of the saplings, little stuff and grind it right off to the ground. And as you can see down on the ground here, right down to the dirt. The only thing this thing doesn't do well with is rocks. And we have a lot of rocks on our property, but for the most part, you know, we've been able to work around them. I did find a giant nugget out in the middle of the trail right over there that uh, we'll have to get the Kubota out here and take a look at it. But so we've only been at this for maybe half hour or so, and we've got the first leg of the upper part done. So it's the nice thing is a piece of equipment like this, it's expensive, but it gets the job done quickly. And quite honestly, it would take me three weekends to get this cleared out. It took us 25 minutes, so worth it. All right, so we are on the next part of the property. This part is a rather interesting setup. The trail that goes right to my right here is a trail that is actually a really good trail for us. The problem is it floods out in about three different spots. Now I could spend the time fixing all the different flood spots along the way, or we can do what Jerry and I are gonna do right now, which is what I call alternate path. So one, it'll go through this lower area here where we have all the flooding, but two, I'm going to give myself an alternate route, which is through this area behind me here. It's not a big am amount of trail. I mean, maybe a total of a hundred feet, but that hundred feet makes a difference between me having to fix up and uh, repair all these trail spots or cut an alternate route through the dry area. So if you're out four wheeling and you want to go through the muddy area, I'm going to have muddy trails. If you want to go four wheeling and stay on the dry trails, I'll have a dry route. So that's kind of one of the things that you do is you kind of make decisions on that. Could I easily go through and fix up all the spots along here? It would probably take me three or four weekends to go through and fix up each one of the individual spots versus 20 minutes here, we'll cut through and now I'll have the alternate route. So the trail will come along, it'll split, go around, one will go dry, one will go the wet way and then it'll come back together and we'll end up right back here where the gator is. You can hear him, he's uh, going out there. That is a gnarly sound. I mean, if you didn't know what that was in the woods and it was off that way and you heard that thing grinding away, it's a pretty vicious sound. It's amazing how fast this goes. 
Cool thing is uh, we're kind of in the area on the property where the wild ramps are or wild uh, leeks, garlic, whatever you want to call them, onion. And when we come and do this, it smells so great out here right now. It smells like wild onions. Because when the machine goes by, it grinds some of them up and unfortunately we're going to lose a little bit of the patch. But I keep finding more and more patches of it out in this area on the property. But today he's out doing this work and it smells great. That's it right there. Just cruising along. Where there was no trail, there is now trail. So I'd show you guys this. This whole area right here that I'm standing in right now, this is uh, food plot 15. We do not have 15 food plots, let me clarify that. We have different parts of the project. When you go from the east side of the property to the west side of the property, the different parts of the property have numbers on them. And what we did was we have food plot one, three, 15, 23, and 36. So all the way, the lower the number, the further east you are. The higher the number, the further west you are. The reason why this is number 15 is because right over there, there was a trail part that we were working on, which I had numbered 14. And over that way, a little bit further to the east, there was a project number 13 and so on. And all the little projects, issues, trees, hangers, things like that, we number them. And as you go from east to west, the numbers get higher. Think of it as like hash lines. So if I'm out on the property and I say, hey, I'm working out on trail 35, you know where it is. It's all the way on the west end of the property. If I say I'm working on trail number two, it's all the way on the east part of the property. So it's one of those things that we use as a numbering system on the property to keep track of where we're working on different projects. So I have a spreadsheet, of course, I'd have a spreadsheet, but I have a spreadsheet of all the different projects that we do, all the different things that we're working on. And in that spreadsheet, it lists off one through 36, and then it has different things that are closest to those points. So if I say, hey, I'm working out on food plot number 15, I can make some notes of here's what I planted, here's what we did, here's what the issues are, here's what it's working, and so on and so forth. And everybody in the, who's out here knows exactly what we're doing. For Jerry, I can just tell him, hey, we're gonna go work on uh, trail number 35. He knows to drive all the way to the west end of the property. If we say, hey, we're working on trail number three, he knows to drive all the way east. When you have a long skinny property, it's really easy to mark and, and kind of come up with that numbering system. The one thing I will recommend to you is make sure you have big enough gaps between it so that you have room to uh, expand as time goes along. That's one mistake that I made was I didn't leave enough space down on the low end of the numbers. So we have a lot of 2.1s and 2.4s and things like that because I didn't give myself enough space on the east end of the property. West end of the property out this way, plenty of room, plenty of space to uh, number and things like that, but just kind of another way to think about your property if you have a big piece of pe uh, property. I know I got this idea from some forestry management guys where that's how they kind of look at some of the logging projects and stuff, and they number them out on the property and, and then they just go, hey, I'm working in section 39 today or something like that. So we just took that same idea that they had and now we're using it here.